After the fall of Acre and the fall of the Holy Land, the Templars fled to France to hide in exile in the heart of Christendom. Little did they know that there were many wars and much danger still ahead. Now only their skill and arms and faith could protect them, for God's kingdom depended on it. Deus Vault. So yes, if you saw that intro, then we are doing another part, the second part of our Templar mini-series. The Templars have crossed the Mediterranean and have arrived in France, seeking shelter and exile after being forced out of the Holy Land. Um, so yes, they are now serving the French crown in putting down the Cathar rebellions in southern France. And here is the French army on campaign looking for those Cathars. Little do they know they are about to go into one of their traps. And it's another ambush, uh, ambush battle. If you guys haven't seen the Fall of the Ninth Legion ambush battle, I highly recommend you go and see that battle. It is great. I'm sure I'll leave a link to it somewhere. Um, but yeah, it's a really great battle. But yeah, so the Templars are here. They, The great warriors are no more. They no longer have a kingdom of heaven to defend. They are now merely knights without a lord. Well, bar the Pope. And they serve Christ and only Christ. But here they are in the hands of the French king for now. But they are about to move, go into an ambush. And we have Bohemia here representing the Cathars. Because, well, the Cathars aren't a well-armed uh, force. They were a, lot of, a large gathering, but they, you know, they weren't well-organized. And here you go, Hussite Flayerman. Perfect example of rebellious... Um, religious rebellion, re rebels, not rebellions. But yes, here you go. Loads of women and men all with pitchforks and looking angry. But they have a, a decent army. It's a 2v1 currently. But out in the woods, unknown to the uh, Cathar forces, is the Templars, who are supposedly on their own campaign march, and they hear the sounds of battle, and they will be coming to the aid of the French crown. Whether the French army will still be intact, we do not know. But, I mean, there is plenty of veterans here from the wars in the Holy Land. We have plenty of cavalry and infantry. And here we go. The famous Templars at the back here. Battle-hardened men. Seen many, many fights in the Holy Land. Now they are here fighting. So it can only be a matter of time before the French eventually find out about this uh, ambush here. But I hope you guys have been enjoying the content re recently. And... Are, uh, well, if there's any recommendations that you want me to give, uh, that you want to give me, then please do drop them in the comments. Um, but I hope you're enjoying the content at the moment and leaving lots of likes and subscribes and comments. As uh, I really hope you do to support the channel. I uh, really appreciate it all. And uh, yeah, just keep it up, guys. And here we go. It looks like the French are about to... Uh, well, they've just been given orders again to carry on the march. Very hard to keep these formations, this column formation, keep the whole army going. But it does look like they've got a lot of swords um, in this army and a few archers and some cavalry in the rear. And it looks like we have a uh, a king of France, but it, he's being, re like, in theory, I think it was the prince, one of the princes of France that um, was on campaign against the Cathars. But we'll have a quick look at what the Cathars do also have. They have, like I said, Hussite Flailman, they've got some crossbows. Um, which are actually not that hard to come across as a, as a rebel. You probably could find them coming across a crossbow. They've got peasant archers. We've They've got lots of more flamen. They've got some uh, sergeant spears back here. Because they there were a few Cathar lords as well. We also have some uh, raiders back here. Some mounted raiders. These guys look kind of cool. Very sort of rebel-like. We've got uh, the Mark Grave of Moravia. Unfortunately, the generals, you know, they're pretty elite. You can't have a pretty awful general, unfortunately. But here we go, it looks like the ambush is beginning and the units are coming under fire. And we'll watch out of the woods as what's it going to be? Sergeants coming out first. Okay, so they've got some pretty elite stuff. But it looks like it's going to be the ribolds out the, fr out the front for the French that are going to be the first to engage. And here we go. Oh, okay, nice cavalry charge. So it looks like the raid is going in there. Nice charge. And there we go. So it looks like arrows are coming from the other side and they're also being flanked on this side. So the French are going to be surrounded pretty quickly. And look at that. The Hussite Flamen are right in there already. 
Not quite sure how they got this deep into enemy lines, but they did. And here comes some more of them. They just don't give a damn. They're just going to go in. They're going to do a load of damage. And there we go. The French column is in chaos. And they're trying to catch the general, or we're trying to catch a general. Oh, it's not a bad charge as well from the cavalry, the gendarmes. Doing excellent work there. So yeah, we have a mixture of second and first tier stuff because it's kind of just over that... It's like that 13th century, early 14th century period. So you don't imagine they would have changed everything to 14th century at this point, but there'd certainly be reforms in place. Um, the only third, third tier unit is the Hussite Flamen because, well, they just look like weird rebels. And, uh, well, it's not, they're not that great, so they're not the worst third tier unit to have on the map. But here we go, more chaos going on back here. Looks like the Chevaliers are having to fight Flamen of their own as well. I mean, it's fairly even. I'd say the Flamen actually are winning that fight if you look at numbers. Lots of breaking going on over here, though. The Hussite Flamen are getting overwhelmed. But the Cavalry is doing a lot of damage, breaking units at the front here. These Ribolds early, breaking very quickly. No news on the moves, movements of the Crusaders. They are still not moving. Uh, have not heard of the, cr the cries of havoc and battle just yet. More charges from the uh, cavalry. They're gonna just break. As, they're gonna break as many units as possible. And really, the French cavalry has to catch the uh, well, the well, the Cathar cavalry really. And if they can get rid of that, then they're probably going to do okay. I mean, their infantry's okay, is um, is France. He's got some Pavi Spears here as well. They're uh, pretty basic. Not even got any marking. They're not even like markings on their uh, shields. Again, giving off that rebel vibe. But yeah, though, it looks pretty damn awesome so far. I mean, I'll just go down this line here. Look, the Chevrolet is just holding back all these Cathars. They are going to need help, I think, eventually. They are slowly getting overwhelmed. It is a 2v1 at this point. They're going to try and force their way through here, and they've done that quite well. Nicely snuck a unit through here. They're going to need to send some uh, more swords in it to support there. The Flamen look like they're forcing back um, and surrounding these Chevaliers. These guys are actually in a bit of trouble here. Surrounded and losing. There you go, attacked in the rear. But the cavalry is doing quite well. It's scaring off all the archers over here. The gendarmes are certainly going to be needed. Um, if the Cathars can focus them down, then they've got a really good chance. I mean, they also probably could do with damaging all these archers. So that's a good focusing down there. It looks like they... I don't know what's happening here. I thought they were going to... Oh, they're breaking, I see. I thought they were going to try and reach around this unit, but no. It looks like this Chevalier unit has been freed up. And look at this. Look who has arrived. The Templars are here. Mounted on their war horses. They are here. They'll cut these men down with ease. And here's another unit getting ready to flank on, flank on in. Nope. He's refused. I guess he's already. What's he running down? Some Hussite Flowman. Okay. But they have arrived. We've got crossbows coming out of the woods as well. So the crusade, well, the Templar army is here. And it was an army at this point in history. There was thousands of Templars camped within, a, well, in France at this point. But these, I, look at this guy with an axe. I don't think that's very Templar-like, man. Come on. Use a broadsword. But, I mean, the French are looking pretty rough. I mean, there's cavalry in here as well from the uh, Templars. We've got some Hospitaller Knights. Their brother, their fellow brothers from another uh, holy order. It's a real shame you can't just get Templar units. Because that would be perfect. I'd like to have an army of Templars. But, uh, unfortunately, there aren't enough Templar units. I thought they were charging these guys down, but these are friendly archers. Um, looks like they're trying to take out this uh, general back here, this ma this uh, Margrave of Moravia. So one of the Cathar Dukes, would say, or Counts. I mean, he's actually trying to take out archers, and he's probably going to take those archers out. Yeah, here we go. More cavalry coming in. This is going to be a quite good charge into the infantry. Just kind of missed it. 
I mean, these Hussite Flamen don't stand much of a chance. Any infantry coming up? Yes, there is infantry now. We have the Templars arriving. We have Hospitalonites with Order Swords. I'm sure the dismounted Templars will eventually arrive as well. If they're not already here. No, this is all, this is all the other stuff. Clearly keeping the uh, Templars in reserve. Those precious men do not deserve to die in this ambush. But here we go. So we're going to send in the Hospitalers first. There we go. In they go. Fighting it out. And these Cathars now fi facing elite units from the Holy Land. Baying for blood. Destroying these heretics. And they're fresh units as well. So it will be a matter of time before... Uh, it won't be a matter of time before they those break. But we have more Cathar units arriving. Pavi Spears. More Flailmen. Coming to the aid. So these guys might turn the battle a little bit. If uh, Jerusalem can't get his troops here in time... Then they could make a problem, but we have more dismounted Hospital Knights. Look at them in their black and white. They look excellent. And then in the red and white, the famous Templars arriving now. But will they be needed? It's looking unlikely. It looks like this uh, ambush is about to get mopped up. And here we go. An excellent charge from the Templars into the back of the Flailman. And that will break them. Deus Vault, they'll be chanting. For the Kingdom of Heaven. Yeah, these guys have basically mopped up everything here. We've got a small charge here needed. We've just about gained the upper hand, apparently. But the Bounce of Power now looking at it. It was even when these uh, started. Um... Yes, it now is, unfortunately, the Cathars have been overwhelmed. It's probably down to these final units here. There's not very much, there's not much else. There's, everything else is breaking. I think generals have died and much else. So we'll just watch from their perspective as they imagine they get a charge. They're already tired and they've not even actually fought yet. Here we go, a charge coming in. Order swords going into Pavi Spears. Nice clash of infantry. And then here as well. Hospitalers clashing with the Pavis. Dirty Cathars. And there we go into the rear. Hospitaler Knights. Yes, excellent. Nothing better than seeing some holy warriors cut down some heretics. Destroy the Cathars. That burn. That Burn their dead and I don't know what else I'm pretty sure they did burning I'm pretty sure they burnt like human sacrifices is what I, they were accused of but um some pretty wild stuff they were like, accused of over the, over time they are getting a uh, run down and here we go gonna have another charge here from the Templars themselves charge into the back excellent and then the French gendarmes as well can't forget they did a lot of damage and they're now penned in just put the hood on and look at that all wavering and a decisive victory we have for the Kingdom of Jerusalem and France. And that is going to be the battle. And uh, we'll quickly look at the end results. So the Templar Knights getting 298 kills. Probably the best unit did well here. They were the first on the scene. Um, and their other one didn't, their other counterparts didn't do too well. Didn't do too bad either, sorry. Um, one Templar Knight getting one kill, excellent. And then Hospitaler getting one, excellent. Um, and then the Hospitaler Knights not doing bad themselves, getting 100 odd kills. Um, we'll look quickly at France, who's played by Dodgy Gob. Um, his Chevaliers did excellent as well, getting 194 kills. And his Gendarmes, no surprise there, 218, 290. And his King didn't do too bad either, getting 173. Then we have a Drunk Norwegian playing as one of the uh, Cathar armies. His uh, Raiders getting. A good amount of kills. He 100. His uh, general getting 133. No surprise there. He's probably his most elite unit. His fireman actually did okay. Getting 65 kills is not shabby for this unit. Um, they're not great, but they're just funny to watch. And they look perfect for like 
religious rebels. And then we have Aiden playing as the other Cathar army. His cavalry didn't do so uh, well, but they still did okay. And then, yeah, his general probably did the best for him getting 67 kills. But the Templar story is not over, and there will be more trials for them and more dangers around the corner. Will they prevail, or will this holiest of orders finally fall? Find out in the next episode what happens to them. And until next time, Legionnaires, I will see you guys.